Okay, uh, welcome to Go Math, lesson 1-9. Uh, today we're talking about division of decimals. So in the last section we looked at what happens when I divide a decimal by a whole number. Well today we're going to go one step further and see what div uh, happens when I divide a decimal by another decimal. And that's a pretty easy leap. Uh, first thing we want to do is set up our problem normally and of course bring in our estimation. So the estimation is always a crucial part of what we were doing. So if I wanted something like uh, 1 and 44 hundredths, and I want to divide it by 1 and 2 tenths. So I have two numbers that are decimals here. The first thing that I want to do is set up my estimation. And I realize that uh, I'm dealing with something that's really close to 1 and something that's really close to 1. So my estimate should be close to 1. Again, this is really 1 divided by 1 gives me 1. So then I set up my problem normally, 1 and 44 hundredths divided by 1 and 2 tenths. Now it's important to realize that whether I'm working with a dividend or a divisor, when I change one number in relation to my decimal, I can do the same to the other number. So whenever I change with one, I have to change to the other. In this case, I can just move the decimal over one place. Because I did that here, I need to do that here. So if you don't believe me why that works, case in point, well, 10 divided by 2 is 5, 100 divided by 20 is 5, 1,000 divided by 200 is 5. It doesn't matter if I zero placement as long as I've moved it in both numbers. So really, now that I've moved my decimal over, my decimal resides right here. And I'm going to color that red just so we can see that clearly on the video. Uh, not that you couldn't see the giant black dot already. So really what I have now is 12 divided into 14.4. 12 goes into 14 one time. I bring down the 2 when I subtract that 2. I hit my decimal. What do I do when I hit my decimal division? I move it up. Bring my decimal there, bring the next number down. 12 goes into 24 two times. That gives me 24, and of course, there's nothing left over. So what I'm left with is an answer of 1 and 2. Let's clean that up. Sorry, my pen got away from me there. 1 and 2 tenths. Is 1 and 2 tenths really close to my estimate of 1? Of course it is. So I know that I'm probably on the right track. Let's take a look at another problem. And in this case, we're going to talk about Tammy. And Tammy is training for a triathlon. In a triathlon, athletes complete and compete in three events, swimming, cycling, and running. She cycled 66.5 miles in 3.5 hours. If she cycled at a constant speed, how far did she cycle in one hour? So really, we're looking at 66.5 divided by 3 and a half hours, or 3 and 5 tenths. First, I estimate 66.5. Well, I know that, that part of me says, well, that should go to 67 or 70, but I'm just looking for numbers that are compatible, like very easily divide in my head. In this case, they took 66.5 and they rounded down to 60. I know that that is not our normal uh, procedure because we would normally round it up to 67. 67 is not easily divided by 3, so they're trying to make it a little helpful for us. We're just getting a ballpark. 60 divided by 3 gives me 20, so my answer, that my estimate is 20, so my answer should be somewhere in the ballpark of 20. 3 and 5 tenths is 66 and 5 tenths. First thing that I can do is I can move my decimal, but I have to move it in both. So I move my decimal over in one, I move my decimal over in the other. What this problem becomes then is 665 divided by 35. Just to reiterate, 10 divided by 2 is 5, 100 divided by 20 is 5, 1,000 divided by 200 is 5. As long as I'm moving the decimal in both places, it really doesn't matter. So uh, I end up with 35 goes into 66. How many times? Well, one time. And when I subtract it, I end up with uh, 31. It's really close to, to that two time. 31, and I bring down my five here. And I might ask myself and say, well, 35 into 315, I don't know my factors of 315 or my multiples of 35. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, well, normally three times 10 gives me 30, but that seems a bit high. So let's just try 35 times seven. I just grabbed the number that I knew was less than 10, right? Seven times five is 35. And I end up with 7 times 3 is 21, plus 3 gives me 245. 
Now, 245 is still a little too low, so let's try 8. 35 times 8, 5 times 8 is 40. Uh, 3 times 8 is 24, plus 4 is 28. And mm, I'm still a little bit low, still a little bit low. So let's try 35 times 9. And I do see a number of you trying this method. You're just uh, putting in numbers to see. You're somewhere in the ballpark. 35 times 9 gives me 45. 9 times 3 is 27, plus 4 is 31. And I end up with 9 for 315. 7 was a little too low. When I knew it was close to 10, I should have just started with 9. And I see my decimal here at the end, so I'm going to bring it up. And we realize that we don't actually even need it. What I end up with is an answer of 19. And I ask myself, is 19 close to 20? Yes, it is. So I'm probably correct. Again, dividing with decimals in both places, you can move the decimal in the divisor and the dividend as long as you move them both an equal amount. So move it one place in one, you move it one place in the other.